the utopians of the modern era who murdered a hundred million of their own people in peacetime, trying to mold them to fit into this perfect world, uh, are the evidence that the entire thing was just a fantasy, it wasn't real. But progressives have taken this model and they're conducting a war on the mind, a war on humanity to force us to fit into their uh, utopian ideology. And traditional America, the traditional family, the church, anything that's a middle class traditional America supports reality, free market system, the constitution. So the progressives want to destroy that, whether it's bringing over millions of illegals or bringing over people that have Ebola, they want to attack the core traditional society that will never buy into this utopian nonsense. That's right, let's play the clip, the utopia definition. Progressives' main agenda is the creation of the perfect future, utopia. Just like the president always says, we move towards making things better one little step at a time. Everything is seen as a step along the way. So you like my t-shirt? I got it off of eBay. I like it, yeah. Yeah. That history is a continual progress. The evil fantasy of progressives that they can be as gods and recreate the world and make it a better place. That's clip number one. Now let's go to progressives in history. Uh, tell us about this clip, Joel. Okay, so here we hear uh, David Horowitz is gonna talk about the progressive methodology to murder people that have ideas in their own head. He talks about how, for instance, the Cambodians uh, murdered everybody with glasses. And you'll hear Oprah Winfrey, you'll hear a female voice, it's Oprah Winfrey talking about what she thinks should happen to Americans uh, in the South. Let's play it. In Cambodia, the communists killed everyone who had glasses. Because if you had glasses, you could read. You were educated. You have to do something with the people who have the bad knowledge in their head. So we're going to start with a clean slate and just create new human beings. It's a very evil idea. In the South, there are still generations of people and they just have to die. They just have to die. The most evil atrocities of our time have been committed by utopians in power. They think that they are the divinity. That's why they're so dangerous. That's why they kill so many people. It really is true. They're the ultimate bold control freaks to say what words we can use. Don't say the word bossy. Michelle Obama said she's going to tell us what to eat. And they really believe it. They tell Africans, you can't have houses and cars and air conditioning as Obama is, you know, they're like an imperial god or something. They just have no shame. Who are these people at, at, at their core? At their core, they are profoundly misguided and also they are profoundly egotistical and uh, narcissistic. That's they, it. See them, they see themselves as the gods on earth. If they create a utopia on earth, they can be God. God is in heaven, reigns over heaven, so they see themselves as the divinity on earth. Now, who is the enemy of God? It's the devil. So anyone that opposes God or anyone that opposes them is evil. That's why they call Republicans racists and all these horrible names. Worse than ISIS. Worse than ISIS uh, because you're opposing the one true God on earth. Uh, this is who, this is what they, they want. And if you stand in their way, just like Obama's mentor, Bill Ayers, uh, said in the 1970s, they wanted to put 50 million Americans in re-education centers. And kill, and kill 25 million. And kill 25 million in the Southwest if they didn't go along with this utopian society. So the scary thing is this has been tried and failed so many times. Yet today, the Democrat Party has been taken over by these radicals. That's right, and they're licking their chops for blood. At the bottom of the rabbit hole is their narcissistic wish to kill everybody. There's no place like Utopia, a Joel Gilbert film. And it does a great job of showing the nightmare that is any type of so-called collectivism. Done on a mass scale. Collectivism works great if it's totally free, voluntary, and in a village. In fact, they've written books on the subject. Even socialists have written books on the subject and say, it only seems to work when it's small and local and people you know, vote, but bigger than groups of 100, it doesn't seem to work, it starts breaking down. That's because corruption sets in and complexity gets involved. And his film gets into that, but 
Beyond that, with Stalin, Lenin, Hitler, Mao, all were collectivists, all were what you'd call progressives, all believe in the power of the state and centralization. They just want raw power, black uniforms, secret arrest, rape whoever they want, take whatever property they want. It is a criminal ideology of control freakdom driven by narcissistic, psychopathic, borderline personality disorder weirdness, breathing demonic life into the state, and then you're really in trouble. And it always wrecks everything in its path. It always creates desolation. Europe is collapsing. Everywhere socialism has come ends up collapsing, ruins families, ruins cultures, ruins just, just everything. But it gives the scum an ether to swim in. This is a short segment, long segment coming up. Uh, tell us about The Wizard of Oz, why that's the big angle in your film, and we'll play this clip. Okay, The Wizard of Oz uh, shows how socialism and progressivism relies on a cult of personality. Like this godlike figure will take care of you and do everything for you. Mao Zedong, uh, Che Guevara, Lenin, uh, Stalin. They tried to create from Obama this uh, cult of personality character, just like the Wizard of Oz, the wonderful wizard will do everything for you. And Michelle Obama was part of that in 2008, uh, telling people how great Obama was gonna make your lives better. So let's play the clip. The Wizard of Oz begins with a tornado. It's the disorientation. Everything's topsy-turvy. That's the kind of event socialists like to create, where you feel you've lost control. Things have gotten worse, and you can't get a handle on life. Grown to be a nation that is afraid of everyone and everything. Fear of one another. I am so tired of fear. Help! Save me! It's after me! It's gonna get me! Well, then you land in Oz. You say, oh, we're glad you landed in Oz. We've got a wizard here. He can solve your problems. So we need you to be courage, to show courage. The wizard will give you real courage. Because he's special. <laughs> Barack is one of the most brilliant men you will meet in our lifetime. This wizard knows everything. He can do great things. And all you have to do is give him all your support, all your money, all your votes. And we need you. Barack can't do this without you. And life will be great. You get to go down the yellow brick road. That says it all. And they know that they're formulaically following what Hitler did, what Stalin, Mao, Pol Pot, Fidel Castro, Hugo Chavez. It came out in the news, and I've been told this by folks that live down there, that they have to pray at school for breakfast and lunch to the government, to Hugo Chavez, and they have public TV where you pray, and you go, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be Hugo Chavez's name, thy socialist kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. These are just total whack jobs, but the, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, well, Ronald Reagan had a great quote that the only places that socialism does work are in heaven where they don't need it and in hell where it already exists. <laughs> and and what they do is they use this godlike figure to manipulate naive people, people that don't know better. And that's why we see today that the entire Democrat Party program is based on disinformation, fooling people with ideas that the rich people are keeping them down, that the rich people don't pay enough taxes. They make up all these stories to manipulate uneducated people. And that's the, the beginnings of the demise of a society when they get enough people to follow along, they can impose this socialist hell upon them and then use the tools of state to suppress any opposition and control all of the assets of the states for themselves. We've seen it a million times. And that's where we're headed. We're getting the police state. We're getting everything that goes along with it. And it's true. The Democratic Party ha has just gotten wildly radical, really communist. They right. use all the same lean forward, all this Marxist stuff. I mean, they mean business. Yeah, even the, I saw an advertisement for a guy running for, a wolf running for governor in Pennsylvania. His entire program was the middle class uh, are getting screwed by the rich people and he wants to fight for the middle and lower classes. Their ideology is a class-based society where people vote their class. And that's why they love racism, that's just another form of class. Let's break that down straight ahead and ask, why do so many billionaires fund this then? Let's say they had a great plan. They shouldn't be able to make us live by it, but they don't even have a great plan. Now, Joel's talking about this. 
it's what Charles Barkley came out and talked about, how he thinks that the quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks is being criticized because he's not, quote, black enough. And it's the same type of mentality where, oh, you know, that guy's doing good. He must have sold out. <clears throat> That's why they push racism so much so they don't have to actually deal with real issues. Now, does that mean there isn't racism out there? Of course there is on all sides. Does it mean there have been evils that had to be right? Of course, but they always want to keep it on those areas because they don't want to talk about the discrimination of big mega banks getting trillions of dollars to back up derivatives through the bipartisan banker bailout that's the opposite of free market and is a transfer to the ultra rich. So what I have found and what Ron Paul and others have documented historically is that ultra rich, George Soros, Ted Turner, Hillary Clinton's worth 100 million bucks. That's pretty super rich. Um, Warren Buffett, the biggest recipient of the banker bailout, but he goes on TV constantly to say, you know, my secretary pays more than I do. That's not right. Well, why'd you lobby to have the laws written like that? I have almost 50 people working for me, and the way they've written the laws now, we can't write off equipment anything, basically, now. I have to, like, pay for it in taxes. Like, a new studio is, is something that I could sell tomorrow. It'd be worthless tomorrow, a big InfoWars studio. Doesn't matter. Spend $500,000 on that. That's $500,000 Alex Jones made. That's why these accrual systems work. Now, if I was a big globalist company, they have it all written in the Arthur Anderson type groups to certify it politically. And then like General Electric, you pay zero tax or Google 3% tax and their executives are based in Luxembourg. But for somebody trying to run a small factory or somebody trying to run a media operation or somebody trying to run a restaurant, it's written where you get almost nothing. I pay over 70% in one form of taxes or another. Now, again, I don't run this place just to make money. The main goal is promote liberty and freedom and, and have a right to property, right to raise my children, a right to religion, right to the Second Amendment, and so many other things and not be conquered. It's about, it's about not being a slave, having an in instinct and, and a mind and a gut to be free. But I realize I've got to have money to be able to fight those battles and be able to have a printing press. I'm for a free press. Everybody should own one. You don't have to have money to fight on a local scale, but you got to have it to fight on a world scale. So, yes, we fund ourselves through book sales, video sales, T-shirt sales that all promote freedom and educate and inform and fight back. And through high-quality supplements that have been shown to do amazing things for the immune system, the body, health, you name it, cutting-edge things at InfoWarsLife.com. And then they have... Rolling Stone and Nightline and MSNBC and CBS News and ABC News and everybody, Media Matters, demonizing me. How dare Alex Jones sell products and fund himself? Yeah, I should just get it out of a stimulus funds like MSNBC got like a billion bucks, their parent company. Hundreds of millions of it went to their NBC and MSNBC division. Rachel Maddow got a raise, it was reported, on your tax money. 400 and something million a year to NPR. Then they beg for money. And that's okay because it's Rockefeller Radio. He's the good rich guy. No, they're the ultra rich that don't want competition. That's the other part of the equation. And who want to dumb people down and make it all about, hey, I don't want to become successful and middle class or wealthy. A lot of folks become middle class and don't want to keep working hard to become wealthy. I reached that point a long time ago. Hey, I don't need more than, you know, two cars and a house and, 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 and medical care and, and decent clothes. I don't worship things, so I don't care. Then I realized people want to take it all away from me. I need to be strong and built up to defend myself, and, and that's come in handy, by the way. So they want people thinking small so they can run the world. They don't want you to have dreams. They want you playing video games and watching sports and fighting with each other so they can run the world. You can't have air conditioning. You can't have a car in Africa. You can't have a house. But Obama can fly in on a giant jumbo jet with red carpets and spend $50 million a day in Secret Service. All these big rich people like Michael Moore suing states to stop paying taxes and, and paying almost no taxes and, and, and owning Halliburton and defense stocks. The issue is they're totally fake monsters. Al Gore buying some $8 million house right on the beach. The same year he said that California by 2013 would be underwater from the melting ice caps. By the way, they're at record size. And he's never called on it. He invented the internet. He, he created the planet in seven days. Just all these lies, the disdain they have for you. I'm ranting. I'm going back to Joel Gilbert and clips from the film. 
It's just that it's not rhetoric about how horrible they are. You know how Al Gore's dad, Senator Gore, <clears throat> made all his money, all his money was being the top gopher minion for Armand Hammer, who was the main Soviet liaison to the U.S. and who ran giant steel mills and factories with slave labor in Russia. Al Gore is fabulously rich and hides most his wealth. And he wants you to pay him carbon taxes to breathe while he has buses and jets and more than 10 homes. And, and, and you've got Ted Turner saying kill everybody when he's got five kids. They're the ultimate hypocrites that have decided they run our lives. The ultimate form of domination. And you sell out to them for chicken feed. Let's go to socialism and human nature and then get Joel Gilbert's take. But look. In the aggregate, if we sell 10,000, 20,000 copies of this film, that's nothing to my operation as much as it costs. For Joel, it helps him make his next film. But you need to support independent media that promotes liberty. You need to get his film and show it to friends and family. And I watched the film. I agree with about 95% of it. It doesn't matter if I disagree with some of it. What matters is overall it's showing what poison collectivism is and how dangerous it is and how it's slavery. And people are ready to learn this and know this now especially folks that have lived under it, not the trendies. They believe that they're part of something big, and, and through extension, they're taking over when they're the biggest chumps. Let's go to that clip. Socialism is all negative. It's a temptation. It can't bring to anything good. And I will raise the minimum wage, and if you can't afford it, we will subsidize your care. Man, human being is very weak. He is vulnerable for temptations. $4,000 tuition credit every student. You don't have to pay an income tax. You're already having a tough time. Part of uh, human nature belongs to devil, part to God. The part belonging to devil makes him follow socialism. By giving them higher salaries. And I know you need that. Whenever you hear, I'm going to cut your taxes, give you higher, higher salaries and free health care and free everything, don't walk, run. Come in the alleyway, man. We've got something for you. And the guys are clearly thugs. Joel Gilbert, tell f folks about who that gentleman was, the former KGB uh, officer. Yeah, that was uh, Konstantin Prebajinsky. He's a KGB defector, a former communist theorist. And he's throughout the film, and he tells all the reality of socialism and communism, uh, very knowledgeable. And he explains that uh, socialism and communism are just a fairy tale for illiterate people who are led into essentially the gulag, the uh, end result of the yellow brick road was not that Dorothy met a wonderful wizard, it's that he sent her to the witch's castle and she was taken prisoner in the dungeon. In the, in the communist system, the flying monkeys get you in the end. Uh, anytime you hear someone say, I'm gonna give you all these goodies and we have the perfect formula for social change, you're gonna end up in prison. Prison camp is the end result of every socialist experiment. And you're put there by these leaders who have fake lives and fake backgrounds. They're completely uh, pathological liars. I documented in my last film, Dreams of My Real Father, that Obama's entire personal history, political and personal, is a lie. So I think by uh, promising people all these wonderful goodies, in their mind, it's a psychological issue. They're trying to relieve themselves of the guilt on the one hand for lying about everything. On the other hand, they're bringing their personal destruction in their own life to the public sector and destroying everyone else's life. That's right, misery loves company. When poor folks, most of them are working so hard to know Obamacare raised payroll taxes, to, to have them say, you don't need to be paying income taxes, we're gonna get rid of it for poor people, and then he increased it. That yeah. is so cold-blooded, I mean, they, they, it's so sick. And then a lot of poor folks though that are on welfare, I've run into them, they really think that if you've got a nice house and a car, and that if you have them come do a job, that somehow you're using them when you're actually creating an economy and that it is the nouveau riche in all the studies that actually create the wealth and have the services. If they weren't there, there'd be nothing. What would you, they just don't know how economies work. It's, it's so sad. Well, instead of the president explaining to people like, uh, thank God this guy opened a business and he's employing people in the neighborhood and you can get your friend to come work there and let's support this business and everybody come and buy ice cream at this new ice cream store on the south side of Chicago. Instead, the progressive mentality is if you opened a business, you are evil. You did it on the back of someone else. It's this 
uh, Marxist nonsense from the uh, Bolshevik era that Obama was trained and indoctrinated in his entire life. Uh, but in my film, for example, I talk to people on Southside Chicago and they're saying, you know, we make $500 a week, but the taxes are taking 200 away. So they can't even make it because of the taxation. If you are being paid $500 a week, you should be paying no income tax, zero. They That's common sense. And, and until the 60s, no one was charged. It, it, it's just incredible. People say, well, how's the government run? Off all the other taxes, there's hundreds of them and they're adding hundreds more. Yeah. Well, they take a payroll tax. Of course, everything is taxed at a high level. But the uh, progressive agenda is just a war on every level of society, every economic group, and especially the middle class, because they want to eliminate it. In socialist economies, they don't have a middle class. There's an elite class that runs everything and controls all the wealth, and then one big lower class. Uh, but let's look at the next clip. It's uh, about the illegals and what they're trying to do. Donde era su usted, primero? El Salvador. También. México. México. De dónde es México? Puebla. Guatemala. Guatemala también. Guatemala. We're recruiting and training Latino organizers. The antiquated immigration system needs to be changed. We will transform this nation. We can have a new El Salvador. You can have a, you can have a stations in, in in the border states. A station in each state. ¿Qué porcentaje de gente en México quieren volver a América? Es el 80%, el 90% de Apoyo a Obama, ¿por qué? Por el plan, el plan de salud. Por qué no te cuidas y trabajar en tu propio país? Porque el problema de que no puedo quedarme en mi país es por el sistema del, del socialismo. <risa> 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 So for, for people that don't speak Spanish, uh, yeah, for people that don't speak Spanish, uh, these were, I was talking to illegals at Home Depot, and they said they left their countries because it was being destroyed by socialism. And you see Obama and his gang executing a strategy to flood America with illegals uh, so that they can help target and destroy the middle class America. And when you know communist ideology and what they call the program that General Parton, the former head of the Air Force Weapons Development, three-star general used to come on and break down with us. Once they take down a country, they collapse it in socialism then bring in communism, that's the, 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 the military occupation. Then they use that country to quote, target the next country with socialism and then, then collapse it. And that's what you show in the graphic is the country collapsing and then the communists take over. They admit that's the plan. Cloward and Pivot is just one variant that I mention a lot because people know what that plan is. It's so diabolical. And, and, and so Central and South America is collapsing under communism right now and socialism. So they run up here to get the free health care, but no, that just collapsed their country. Well, they're being used. They're being used by our socialists to destroy this country as well. The difference between today's socialists and Marxists in the Democrat party and the Marxists from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s is back then they would look you in the eye and say, we're gonna destroy you, we're gonna destroy America. Now they look you in the eye and say, we want to help poor people. And then they do the same thing. The they go, oh, the it's same. children when only something like 17% are under 18. And the, and the illegals that are coming have huge criminal records. They can get fake identities. How do you become a new person? You don't have to change your identity or anything. You just come to the U.S. and be whoever you want. Kill as many people as you want. Do whatever you want. 
Well, here in California, for example, 50% of the prison population are illegals. We have the Nortes, the Sedenos, different criminal gangs. Uh, the people coming over the border are not people that see America the same way we do. They're people with completely different agendas. And Obama is lying to everybody with a very evil plan to uh, destroy middle class America. You're right. How long is the next clip on drug culture? Short, 30, Let, 40 seconds. Yeah, let's go ahead and play that clip. Okay. Fundamentally transforming the United States of America. Colorado became a proving ground for the progressives. And boy, oh boy, have they gone to town. Is it possible to get a sample? No. No? No. How hard is it to get the card? Well, I have these really high arches. Yeah, let's see. Well, that's a bummer, man. That's a bummer. What you a bummer. What? I got to suffer with it every single day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the idea of the left is if we can get these traditional ideas broken down, if people can say, well, let's smoke a little marijuana, what's the harm? Well, then the next barrier the left wants to attack is easier to attack. Well, okay, we do a little marijuana. What about a little bit of marijuana, maybe a little bit of cocaine? You've created a drug culture, and that's an easier culture to captivate, to control, and to enslave. And that's why George Soros backs it. And to be clear, I'm against the drug war. It's another form of evil. They always bring in the crisis, offer their solution. But now you basically waive your rights. I've looked into these marijuana cards and things where people are now put into the system as well, and it's just a way to control them. So I do agree with your perspective on that. Okay, let's play the next one. It's uh, Islam in Detroit, and I show the connection between the progressive and Islamist ideology. All right, well, let's stay there and talk about that teaming up that you cover uh, okay. in the film with Joel Gilbert in the final segment with our guest. We have a few more clips. Uh, we're going to also talk to Peggy Joseph. That's the last clip. Get okay. the DVD at InfoWarsStore.com. They tell the giant poor masses that they've helped create with socialism that anybody with money is bad. Well, we know that's not true, but there are corrupt rich actually pushing this. I'm not what they call an Islamophobe. I think it's wrong to go target you know some of these countries and overthrow them and put radical Muslims in. So I know that's actually the double game going on. But it is true that in England, especially in other areas, they're using Islamic groups to join up with the progressives and the left. Uh, and you never hear feminists criticizing radical Islam or any of that stuff you know, to women. And then going after other people's free speech. And my big issue with a lot of what we see out of Islam is the attempts, uh, you know, to restrict Western uh, freedom. And, and I am a Westerner. I am into freedom. I'm a libertarian. I'm a paleoconservative, you could call me. But uh, I don't like a lot of the stuff I'm seeing going on and the attempts to shut down my free speech. And I see the left teaming up with Islam. Let's uh, play that clip. And then we'll uh, get Joel Gilbert They're turning set. a church into a mosque. And by adding the Islamic architecture, the arches, and then the minaret, it becomes Islamic architecture. Do you live in the neighborhood? It used to be a Catholic church. Then the people left Detroit. They lost their following. So the Muslims are here now. I'm going to stop by the American Muslim Center. It also looks like a former church, if you ask me. That's who I am. For the Jews and for the Israelis, we will say to them the word that the time is going to come. This is the Islamic Center, the beautiful mosque. Il Allah, Il Allah. There is no God but Allah. Muhammad Rasul Allah. Muhammad is the messenger of God. Go ahead and give us your take on that. Yeah, that's the clip. Uh, progressives destroyed Detroit. They uh, emptied the city of all businesses and all people uh, moved away. And uh, Islam moved into Dearborn and other places in Detroit. And I went to several churches that were being converted into mosques. And a lot of people don't know today that uh, the Obama administration is quietly approving 10 to 20,000 immigrants from Muslim countries with legal visas every month. That's why we see mosques popping up all over the country. And in Detroit specifically, they're well, converting churches. Sure, uh, and some of these are radical sects uh, that are blowing up and burning all the churches and killing Christians. And I guess we're kind of not being progressive. We should ask them to chop our heads off, right? Well, the Islamists and progressives both view Western capitalism, free speech, and free markets 
as an obstacle to taking power. Therefore, they are partners in targeting the middle class and the Western free market system because we're the obstacle to their taking power. And this is why they work together so closely, and that's why they're against America and against Israel together. Well, yeah, and I have some criticism of Israel as well. I try to look at all sides of this, but undoubtedly, there's persecution of the Christian church and of free speech in this country with the IRS, and the, and the feds just ruled that persecution will continue, federal court today. Well, it's... Uh, Fine, chop it's, my head just, off. I admit it, I'm bad. It's just an, another area of targeting the uh, the, Ameri the great American middle class that built this country and stands for so many great principles that save the world time and again. I want to come back in overdrive. Some stations won't carry this, infowars.com forward slash show, folks. But for congruency, when we post this entire piece uh, on the web uh, tomorrow so people can watch it and see all the clips for radio listeners, we'll have this posted on infowars.com tomorrow. We're also going to play uh, the Larry Grafwald clip. Um, he went to prison over his intel with their plans to put 50 million of us in forced labor camps and uh, kill another 25 mil. Now, for population numbers, that'd be more like 75 mil in slave camps, about 40 mil in the death camp. Uh, and that's currently the, pretty much what their plan is. They'd like to put me in a camp and, you know, stomp my brains out. Uh, and, and you as well, because that's what real power is all about, is them having their way, because they're God. You are listening By the way, they're GCN. fascists. It might be. They're not even liberals or socialists. Again, this is a full uh, sneak peek review of the film. Uh, we'll post it in its entirety by tonight or tomorrow. It'll be up on Infowars.com. But I just hope people, usually I don't push like this with films we promote, but it just really needs to be seen. The exclusive place to get it is Infowarsstore.com or 888-253-3139. Uh, get into Peggy Joseph, uh, the last clip we're going to be playing here today, Joel. Okay, so Peggy Joseph is the infamous Obama voter in Florida. In 2008, they caught her on camera saying, Obama's going to pay for my gas. He's going to pay for my mortgage. This is fantastic. So uh, I tracked her down six years later, and uh, she told me the story that she was just caught up in the emotion of the moment because Obama was promising all this stuff, and the wonderful Wizard of Oz is going to save my life uh, and make everything wonderful, and that she had actually now educated herself and doesn't support Obama and felt he was nothing but a charlatan, another Wizard of Oz. Peggy Joseph took her daughter out of school early Wednesday. Her emotions ran high following Obama's speech. I won't have to worry about putting gas in my car. I won't have to worry about paying my mortgage. Hello. Hi. Hi. Are you Peggy Joseph? Yes, I am. I have a present for you. I brought you some ruby slippers. <laughs> <laughs> slippers? Yes. I, I didn't order any slippers. I know. Well, I'm making a documentary. I'd like to talk to you. Do you mind? I won't have to worry about putting gas in my car. I won't have to worry about paying my mortgage. Did Obama pay for your mortgage? <laughs> and did he pay for your gas? <laughs> Absolutely not. Mortgage got worse and gas has got, prices got higher. During that time, we, we needed a change. But a change for the better, not for the worse. He had a very big voice, just like the Wizard of Oz. The wizard with this little teeny, teeny, tiny man. And I think it's the same thing with Obama, man behind the curtain. Not who we thought or expected him to be. I was Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> That's how I feel. I was Dorothy. I started getting more, a little bit more educated about politics and reading more. What I learned is never trust the wizard. It's within ourselves to have the, uh, the determination, the uh, courage and the brains to bring us to our destiny. Is America still the land of opportunity? 100%. It is. Anything that you want to do or become, you can do it in America. And that's why they want to wreck it, so that you got to go to them and they can control you. I want to play a final clip here. Uh, this is, because you mentioned it, uh, uh, the uh, former Green Beret who um, infiltrated the weathermen. These are the people that advised Obama, and this is what they plan to do to Americans. Here it is. And uh, they felt that this counter-revolution could best be guarded against by creating and establishing re-education centers in the Southwest, uh, where we would take all the people who needed to be re-educated into the new way of thinking and teach them how things were going to be. 
I ask, well, what is going to happen to those people that we can't re-educate, that are die-hard cap capitalists? And the reply was that they'd have to be eliminated. And when I pursued this further, they estimated that they would have to eliminate 25 million people in these re-education centers. And when I say eliminate, I mean kill. 25 million people. That's Larry Grafwald. I want you to imagine sitting in a room yeah, with, Larry's in the film with 25 people. That's in the film. Most of which have graduate degrees from Columbia and other well-known education. Calmly centers. talking about killing 25 and million. Them figuring out the logistics for the elimination of 25 million people. And of course, uh, and they were dead serious. Larry Grafwald is in the film. That's why you need to get it. He just died. It was it late last year or this year? What a great guy. Yeah. Uh, and imagine having to sit around for years with the weathermen, with heirs, and all of them talking about blowing up cops and everything else. It's truly disgusting. Listen, thank you so much, Joel. We're going to have you back again soon uh, on the nightly news as well. And just thank you for making a great film. It'll definitely get people thinking. Great job. Thank you. Thank you.